I have traveled tens of thousands of blocks to find all 53 biomes. I failed at finding the last one before my time ran out. So, here I am, 30,000 blocks out from spawn, aiming to build the ultimate industrial district to redeem myself. That is the second of the seven missions, peeps. But that's not all. In this episode, I'm revealing two new missions. The second one applies to the entirety of the series rather than this specific episode. No time is wasted as the day begins and I set off to in <coughs> import workforces. In no more than a day, I locate a nearby village and begin recruiting villagers to the most important part of the industrial district, the Trading Hall, one of many sections of the underground district. So, we have two doors leading into the little box in which they shall reside and grow in population. For now, of course, we're going to need a reliable source of food. This landscape looks brilliant for building something on in the future, so what I'll do is I'll deforest this entire cliff in preparation for a future structure while gathering resources. In compensation for cutting down all those trees, I'll plant their descendants near my camp. I bring you bread! Now that this land area is cleared, I think we tunnel down from here into the mountain and call this the top section of the industrial district. I'm serious. Despite setting up shop inside a mountain seeming incredibly time inefficient, it is space efficient. And in a way, it allows me to preserve this beautiful landscape by running the industrial action underneath it. I do not want to hear Roshimai me while I'm boring into this mountain. I'm learning and adapting. I do realize this is a cube of air inside a mountain at the moment, but trust me, all it needs is some love. Yeah, this looks nice. These back walls are going to be chiseled deep slate. Oh, hello there. I feel like preserving that sunrise view, so let's not block it up. Let's install some windows instead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. In such a monotonous room, I felt the addition of a chandelier would tie everything together, like a passing chord in an otherwise repetitive chord progression. Alright, so behind each lectern, a villager shall stand the stone platform like support. Stone walls don't exist. Cobblestone will do the trick. It's time to transport the villagers. I should probably install a ladder, shouldn't I? As for transporting the villagers, we have all consented to unending labor day and night. As long as we get our fair bread. Effectively, I'm thinking rails are something that get rather expensive on moss, but I suspect they will pay off in the end. This is no basic trading hall after all. The goal is to be able to trade for every functional enchantment book and more. In fact, the entire industrial district is one you would not call basic, not only due to its ambitions on paper, but also due to some complexity deriving from the third of the seven missions, which shall be revealed in time. Speaking of things and moss, though, and we have now acquired Silk Touch. Another thing I've acquired is the realization that trading with librarians costs a lot of paper and therefore sugarcane. I'll need a lot of in the future is wool, so I should probably start growing my sheep empire. And empires need food. Peeps, this is the humble beginning of the industrial district. Can I safely land on this line? I'm sure somebody can. Point is, I'm here to extract some valuable minerals out of the mountain for the next section of our humble project. The sheep sharing wool producing farm that is automatic and doesn't use redstone. Wait, what? I am allowed to use redstone, but wait, where am I going? <laughs> redstone components that require materials from the never. 
that is what I'm not allowed to use. And that is the only time you'll hear me mention any other dimension, because the third of the seven missions is as follows. Live only in the overworld without setting foot in other dimensions. Is how you can see that. I see it as a wonderful challenge. A challenge it is, one lasting throughout the whole series. Basically, this redstone clock is what makes the farm automatic. It's going to make that sound for all eternity now. Typically, an automated wool farm would rely on an observer block to detect grass being eaten and trigger the dispenser with shears. Alas, I don't have access to the materials necessary to craft observers, so my design relies instead on the old-fashioned circuit looping infinitely and triggering the dispensers in frequent intervals. Sure, it is noisy, but you cannot deny its effectiveness. Holy moly, it's producing wool, alright. Well, this is start. Expect future expansion, but it's start. Consider that expansion already funded. We are in no short supply of wheat nor sheep. We will be in short supply of other things though. Building farms for resources costs resources. Hence, my ingenious tree farm that is also automatic. As long as I'm there to chop down the tree. Look, at least it's renewable, okay? Our technology is limited. Don't look. Don't, no, don't look at that. I'm not proud of it, but this is, uh, this is my manual moss farm. Why isn't the water flowing? If I change the timing... Yeah, the water's flowing now. If I add more repeaters... It's almost like it got worse. Changing the timing again... Ah, no! Well, now the water doesn't flow, but the lava does. Okay, now it's just generating cobblestone when I want stone. What just happened? Only the first row is working. I sincerely tried to construct a semi-automatic moss farm, but as it turns out, stone generators are introverts and only like working in single rows. No matter what I did, the stone wouldn't generate across the whole width of the platform. We're stuck with replacing the stone and growing moss by hand. Moving on, let's mine some stone. Ooh, this looks like a fruitful cave. No! Not again! Please don't follow me! Ah! This cave is so epic. Ooh, is that a spider spawner? Yeah. This adventure was most profitable in not only minerals, but also googly spawners. What I did there, turning the spawner into a farm, albeit a manual, is what we're going to do next. Just properly and in a different format. Spider spawner. See, I've been here before. I remember spotting the monster room in the cliffside when roaming around the area, as you can see by that torch. So, I dug deeper. Conveniently, I located the right type of monster chamber precisely underneath the industrial man cave that I had created. I'm so rich, I can just repair my fancy diamond pickaxe with a new diamond pickaxe. We have zombies! But we are not after zombies, no, no, no. Those cobwebs are there for a reason. Not to make the ends of these zombies more painful as they slowly accept their fate. As under, so above. As above, so under. If I, underneath the monster chamber, am after copper ingots, what do you think needs to happen with the zombies above? They have to transform into drowns, of course. Hence the cobweb, whose job it is to slow down the descent of the zombies just enough to make them drown. Once they descend, they Ascend. Move. Move. Now I wish it would have been as smooth as step one, wake up, step two, get cows, step three, go sleep. But I had to laboriously take turns to sail both of the boats to transport both cows in one trip, or rather, a multitude of micro trips because I don't have leads. If I did, I could just tow the cows behind me as I sail smoothly in my single boat. Satisfying. So, to recap, I need books for trading, I need lever for books, and I need cows for lever. Because I am expanding the trading hall. Have we connected the dots? Ooh, that's quite a bit. But it starts by multiplying these villagers. Now, in the meantime, let's do some chores. Steal 
Clear Thunder with my new sword for... It's time for a lot of trading. I would like to keep track of what villagers I have and where. So this is going to be a log of all. Uh, I want this to be one line. Fine, I'll just embrace the double line title. This might be a tedious system, but at least there's a proper knowledge base. There is something throughout this trading hall expansion that did feel more and more tedious every time I had to do it. Climb up and down the ladders between the floors. We don't have polished diorite walls in Minecraft? I have just improvised this on the spot, but I feel like this should work. You guys need food, don't you? Oh god. <laughs> uh, help? Wait. <laughs> Spot the character, peeps. Where's Ark? Why does my character look like a brown cow? find that cat. Anyway, the trading continues. I wonder what he's thinking about this whole situation. Despite the amusing roller coaster I accidentally built, my mission was to keep trading, and that I did. Until I grew bored, the recruiting of villagers is a very monotonous process. It is a back and forth cycle of harvesting sugarcane, turning it into paper, and selling it to existing and newly recruited villagers. Until you realize you need more food to feed more villagers, and you, seeing it as an opportunity to escape these villagers' faces for a while, choose to... Build a giant wheat peninsula. This is perfect! I have a natural vine farm here. And I'll turn these into slabs. Does anybody else use this trick where you use slabs instead of a whole box to save resources? One here, one for you. No, two for you. Some pebbles. This is turning out great. Obviously, I'll have to beautify the edges of this landmass and make it, you know, less of a floating flat thing. But this is a good start. How are we looking? That looks like a ready harvest to me. But first, I have something else in mind. Something to add some life. We'll need a crafting bench to make bread. There we are, a bit of a chunkier hull. Some storage for wheat. Some more storage to balance out the weight distribution. Is that even? Now it is. And some ladders to get aboard. Hmm, I should make a staircase here. An agreement is an agreement. Take it. Take all the bread. What am I, the bread king? Indeed. An agreement is not to be broken, and we did not do so. Both parties, the villager and I, have fulfilled their duties, and I have fulfilled the purpose of this trading hall. Both internally, with it being fully populated with villagers, and now externally as I install the final interior decorations. Alas, with every moment that passes, the more unfulfilled my heart feels, for I know, out there, in this vast world across the seven seas, my name is being called. A side quest awaits, 
before we can embark on the next of the seven missions.